She's stubborn. Shut up. It's a parenthesis to Rowan's who... I am Groot. Oh, again with the I am Groot. Hey guys. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Today we are going to be doing my April wrap up. Is it? Maybe? So... In April, I read this many physical books. So we're just going to start with the book that I DNF'd, which was Pride and Premeditation. Now this was sent to me as an ARC. It's not due out until May the 16th, I think. And the Harper 360 kindly sent this to me in exchange for a review. So I was struggling to read this to begin with. So if you've watched any of my videos from the rest of the month. Um, April's been a bit of an up and down month for me at the beginning of the month. Um, reading wise, because I spent more or less a week, the first week over Easter and things with the family so I didn't read. I tried to start read a thought, read a thought, but then got migraines so that went downhill. I read one book during that time which we'll come to in a bit. I felt initially that the reason I wasn't feeling it all that much was because I'd just come off the back of a very average contemporary and then um, I didn't feel well. But every time I tried to pick it up, the motivation to continue to read was extremely lacking. I've, As you can tell, I've it's not my best month, but I've read eight other books during the month. So I didn't, I wasn't having an issue with reading. It was just this book. So I thought, well... It is historical fiction, it's not something I'm used to, but the premise was extremely interesting. So, basically Pride and Premeditation follows a girl called Lizzie. She wants to be a solicitor or a barrister, but because of the times, she is very looked down upon in a professional aspect of her life. Her dad basically said to her that his her mum doesn't want her to be a lawyer or a barrister. She wants her to make house. Be a good housewife, homemaker, bear children, do the whole woman thing. Live a high side of life by marrying a very well-to-do man. And her mother has this guy lined up for her called Collins who works for her father. Who is set the one that they're setting up to take over the firm when her dad decides to retire. Lizzie hates this. Lizzie hates Collins. Collins is an absolute a-hole. He's misogynistic, he's very up himself, does very little work and gets all the credit for it. So her dad basically says to her that in order to prove yourself that you could take over this firm, solve a case using logic. Don't use Collins as your crutch, don't make excuses. I want to see you use your logic and your intelligence to solve a case by yourself. Killinkidinkly, on comes a little urchin that says there's been a murder, explains the murder, and then Lizzie is trying to solve this murder. She doesn't believe the guy who's been accused of it did it, so it just follows her throughout that. So that premise to me was great, a little murder mystery, and I thought, so I was really excited to read it. I will preface it, I know that this was just the times that this was setting. Obviously you don't know what you do and don't like and what does and don't doesn't rub you the wrong way until you read it or until you watch it. So it slowly came to light that the constant reference to how she needs to be a good wife and find a man to marry and, and all that kind of stuff. That sort of like typical what a woman should be kind of mindset that they had. That was grating on me. Consistently grating on me throughout the book and I got over 50% through this, just over 50% through this book and then that seemed to be like the forefront of what was going on and the murder mystery type of things seemed to take a back seat so first off it was it was more a case of she's a woman doing this and she shouldn't be rather than there's somebody that's been she believes has incorrectly been accused of murder and she's trying to find the person who did it and get this guy set free so it the murder mystery side took a back like a back seat so the vlog that i was going to do for this book um i scrapped it because i scrapped the book so 
I will put a clip in here of the scene that of my reactions <laughs> and the scene that I'm referring to. Okay, so the blatant racism is there's a girl in this book, like spoilers possibly maybe, but I have to get this out. There's a girl called Charlotte and she is she's a person of colour and she's been kind of flirting or it's been alluding to that she's been flirting with this guy that is take is like in line to be like taken over Lizzie's father's business. So basically he's just said that <clears throat> Miss Lucas is a da 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 fine young lady, Colin said. But you must know that I'm hardly interested in her in her in that way. She's not an appropriate appropriate as a life partner. And then Lizzie was just like, what the hell? Because her mother was from the West Indies and not the West End. Collins nodded. I'm glad you understand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but what? And then, and then, and then, the pure misogyny of it all. When it comes to marriage, you and I are far better suited. I'm certain both of your parents will approve of the engagement. Well, this was a nightmare. I haven't even given you an answer, Lizzie reminded him. Collins kept trying to edge closer, and Lizzie was running out of, running out of space in which to retreat. I'm not worried, he told her. <clears throat> I know that when a young lady refuses a man, they secretly mean to accept. I'm prepared to ask again and again before leading you to the altar. I mean, does no mean no mean nothing to this man? No means no. Thing is, I know. I know it was just the times, but for me it just feels like it's being beaten. Like... <sighs> I don't know. If it carries on like this, I am not going to be able to continue reading this. It's making me so mad. It's making me so fucking angry. If he, if he touches her, I'm DNFing it. If he touches her, I'm DNFing it. That, that's, that's it, I'm done. But I'll, I'll be back when I've read a bit more. He touched her. He touched her. He touched her. I can't deal. I can't deal. The very next page, he grabbed her wrist and his expression changed from being pleasant to being not so pleasant. I can't, I can't do it. Okay, so, as you can see, like, I really had a reaction to this. And I said, if he touched her, I was done. And he, and he did. Sorry, spoilers, but, yeah. That was just one step too far for me. I couldn't do it. I'm going to review the book based on what I've read so far. And I'm going to try and word it in the best way possible. I'm not going to slam the book because there's so many people that like that kind of book. But I was sent the book to give my honest review. And um, I'm, I'm just going to give my honest opinion and just try and word it in the right way. Which, when verbally, I'm crap at. But when I'm writing it and I have time to think about it then I am better at doing that. So I'm hoping that the author and Albert Collins don't like strike me down for giving it a bad rating. But it, that was the two star for me. And the reason I'm still rating it is because I got over 50% of the way through the book. If I had DNF'd it right at the beginning, I wouldn't have added it to my Goodreads and I wouldn't have rated it. I would have just emailed Harper Collins and just said, look, I can't do it. But because I got over 50% of the way through and I feel like I got a good chunk of the story, I feel like I could form some reasonable opinions on the book, so I'm rating it. Okay, so we're going to move on to the second ebook of the month, which was a key to you and me. This follows a girl called Piper, who has had a recent breakup with a girlfriend. She is very out, openly queer, and to get away from her breakup, she then goes to spend the summer with her grandma to work as a stable hand. She then meets Kat. Kat is very undecided about her feelings. She doesn't, um, she doesn't like boys this, from what she knows, and she is struggling to come to terms with her identity um, and what that means for her, like in the small town that she lives in. She is tasked to give Piper driving driving lessons, and obviously it's a contemporary. You can tell where it's going to go. So. The actual story was okay, it was very middle of the road, nothing too exciting, 
nothing to really write home about. I did like the fact that he showed Kat sort of dealing with whether or not she liked girls, how to tell her family and her friends. She does also have her best friend is gay, so she's seen how people have dealt with him coming out and things like that, but it, yeah, so that side of it I was, I really enjoyed like reading, but other than the fact that Piper likes horses, she didn't have very much depth of character. It was it was just a very okay contemporary. Didn't really find myself laughing out loud. It was just very middle of the road. So I don't do point five ratings, so I rated it a three star, which to me is still good. And it's it's if you just want a very homely feeling contemporary that has queer rep in it that is very well written then this could be for you the next three star read for me was fireheart tiger this was the read rate review pick of the month and so with this it is a novella and it's by aliette de bodard bodard it follows a girl called tan who was sent away as a child to where was it F F theory, F theory. and she returned to her mum's court but her mum keeps her in a room away from people. Don't think it fully explains why she does this but she seems to be like the child that she, her mother doesn't really trust all that much and her mum's not a nice person in all fairness but she is sort of like the negotiator to try and bring peace to um, where she's from. It's just it got three star because it was very confusing. So there's a girl called El. This is Sapphic as well, by the way. There's a girl called Eldris, who's a princess of where she was sent away as a child. She comes to see her on under the guise of a of a political negotiation, and then things happen. And then there's a fire elemental called Jan Jan. I can't pronounce things properly. I do. I do apologise if I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's hard to talk about it because it's so small without giving things away. But for me, it was just hella confusing, for one. And the ending was just kind of like, I don't know. It, was, it wasn't It was the best for me. Again, I don't give half stars. I would have given it like a middle of the road 2.5 if I gave half stars. But it got a 3 from me. I think it was more confusing because it was very political and it... It was a novella. I think for me, if you're going to go into something very political, it needs to be longer than this or explained better. Okay, so next up we have Witch's Boy. And this was a, a four star. It was a low four star for me, but it was four stars. This followed a young boy called Ned who, for reasons, he is very quiet as she was speaking and the villagers and not very nice to him but he is the son of a sister witch we never find out her name i don't think but yeah we've where we he follows ned on a journey when magic is accidentally released and it shouldn't be and it follows him trying to find a way to control this magic and yeah keep everybody safe keep the magic good and he meets on his travels a girl called Anya who is the daughter of a bandit king and she has her own things that she's dealing with. Okay so this part is going to be a bit spoilery for the book but I feel like I need to mention it because it was brought up in the live and it is a valid point and obviously everyone has their own opinions on a book but the thing that's happened to Ned is not because he was born with a disability. It's not something's happened and then and it's magic related someone's seen someone did mention that a child could see this as a child was disabled and had something um had a disability and then they didn't and it can be fixed and it wasn't a very good representation representation of disability um i was in like a, a fantasy headspace i just saw it as like magic did something and that was it, whereas she, it, she made a valid point that some, some, some children could see this as oh he was disabled, this thing happened and it fixed him, why can't I be fixed if there are a child struggling with like, dealing with a disability. So if 
things like that could potentially affect you then just be wary that 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 can be a thing in this I, I feel like I had to mention it because someone did bring it up and like did shine some light on that aspect of it which is a, an aspect I didn't see it from other than that I listened to the audiobook while reading along with this and I actually did really enjoy it I enjoyed the story some parts of the plot I could have done without like didn't make sense as part of their journey it was just a very convenient plot device that was put in there to make it so that Ned and Anya were alone on their adventure. It is very whimsical and very much in that sort of like the fantasy sort of realm. This could have been so much smaller if the unnecessary parts were taken out, in my opinion. I really enjoyed it. The adventure was good. I didn't like how long it took until we met Anya. The wolf was cute. But yeah, that makes me sound like I don't really like it, but I did. I did like it. And then we go on to my other false star of the month, Fortuna Swan. This follows a girl called Fortuna. She's a nightmare. She has been looking for her brother for the last two years when this book starts. Then along comes a very intriguing fate that makes a deal with her and says, Marry me, I will take you to your brother. So initially she's like, mm, what are you trying to pull? But then she ends up marrying him and then it goes from there. As I knew going in, this is quite dark. It's not a happy place to be, but it also is a happy place to be in a way. <laughs> Am I bad that I really like? I w this was a happy place to be. It was interesting. It was fast paced. It was intriguing. The character is Fortuna. She's stubborn, she's hot-headed, she's, she's just great. And then Collis, I thought he was an absolute a-hole to begin with, but the more you get to know him throughout the book, the more you kind of think, is he really the dark fear that I initially thought he was? Like, he makes me question things up in here. We don't see much of Damon. It's more about her um, and what happens after she marries Collis. But it is top tier. The reason I didn't give it five star, they just didn't give me that five star feel. I just felt like there were certain things that were missing a little bit. Um, I would have liked to have got more time with Damon, um, seeing as that was part of the synopsis. But then again, if you've read the book, you can understand why she didn't get much time with Damon. So, yes, four stars. I think the third one is now out in paperback. It was released on ebook in December, but it's now out in paperback. And um, I think she's on with the fourth, so this was definitely a good one. Next up, we have At Your Age, Eve Brown. This is the third in the Brown Sister trilogy. It's not really a trilogy, it's more of a companion series. So, um, this was the contemporary book club book club pick. You don't have to read this as part of, like, in chronological order, obviously, because I read this last, and this is the third book. But this follows Eve. She is the youngest of the Brown Sisters, and she... It's very flaky. She doesn't know what she wants in life. She flit, she flits from job to job. Doesn't take anything really seriously. And her parents get tired of it. She has an argument with the parents and she storms off and she's just like, I'm not going back until I can prove to them that I can hold down a job and I can be serious. She then comes across an inn that's um, conveniently run by a very broody, grumpy Jacob Wayne. And this has... I can't, I'm not, it's not a known voices review, but it seems from my perspective that the autism rep is in this has been done very sympathetically and I like how it was done in the book. It, it follows Eve and Jacob on their journey of being, it's not enemies to lovers and I don't like when people say it's enemies to lovers because they don't, it's, it's not, like unless you're literally at war at the beginning and then lovers at the end it's not enemies to lovers it's more like um he dislikes her to friends to lovers <laughs> but yeah following them on their little journey was 
was really nice. I like following Eve and how she found out things about herself and how Jacob found out things about himself and I just I just liked it and Jacob's best friend was just a great little side character. I really enjoyed this so yeah I give it four stars. And then we come on to the last of the four stars which was King of Scars and this is brilliant okay. This follows Nikolai, Zoya and Nina after the events of what happened in the Six of Crows um, duology and the Shadow and Bone series. So Nikolai and Zoya are off in one place trying to do their thing, um, trying to find <laughs> Nikolai a wife um, to secure the throne and yeah their chemistry is just, I really, really enjoyed that side of it and then you've got Nina off doing her thing. It follows the three perspectives, but Nina is still connected to Nikolai because she works for Ravka. She's a Ravkan soldier. So she works for Nikolai. That's how the connection, that's where the connection is. But Zoya and Nikolai, the perspectives that you see are still are following the same sort of journey they are together throughout the book. So the reason I gave it four stars instead of five because the story was great, characters great, Lee Badugo, top tier, brilliant. The only thing was the just just the disjointedness of the time. So because we followed Nikolai and Zoya together, when it changed perspectives, it was still following the same. They were still they were still following the same plot line this way, whereas Nina's was kind of off this way, and. Even though they were connected by the fact that Nina worked for Ravka, the actual storylines themselves didn't tie in together and it was just a bit disjointed at times. But I cannot speak more highly of an author. I think Lee Badugo is going to be an author by author for me. She's just brilliant. So yeah. And then we come on to my five star reads, which I am... I'm so happy that these books exist. So we've got size. Where do I start? Neil Shusterman, absolute artist with words. This was brilliant. Okay, so I'm not having to tell you. You all know what size about though, don't you? Size follows Citra and Rowan in a world it's in the future in the future where people cannot die of natural cause causes we have defeated death but they still have to have some kind of population control because people can still have children so there are these people called sides who glean people which is basically a way of killing people to control the population but you have to train to be a scythe and the way that you train to be a scythe is that one of them pips you as an apprentice and then once you've gone through these trials you then become a scythe. So Citra and Rowan are picked by a scythe to be his apprentice, his apprentices um, and it follows them on their journey. <laughs> Citra, I mean they're both quite reluctant to begin with to be fair but Citra really did not want to be picked to be an apprentice but I think just her attitude. She's very stubborn. She's very independent and I like that about her. I love that about her. The, the, the Citra and they come from different families as well. So Citra's family is very loving and together and they're very caring about, like they care about her a lot and Rowan's situation with this family is different and it's, it's not as hunky-dory as Citra's is. So he's more willing to try and get away from his family. But just the characters, the development of the characters from where they started to where it finished and this is only book one, only book one in a trilogy and I need book two and three like ASAP. They just, the cliffhanger that it left it on was top tier. The writing, the atmosphere, the constant suspense that I was in, the plot twists, the just get in for the moon you shoot for the stars and you hit the star and you're like ding 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 that made no sense but this is what this book is this is brilliant and i cannot wait 
to get on to the next one. There is nothing about this book that I did not like, which is very rare. Even in a five star, there's usually something that I dislike in some way. I dislike the villain. <laughs> there we go. I dislike the villain. Finally, we are coming on to... I don't even have to read the rest of this series to know that this is going to be one of the best series of all time that I am going to read, no doubt, hands down. I've said it here, we're only in May, but this spell slinger, where do we start? I wholeheartedly blame Jade from Jade Reed for this and I am not mad one bit. I hadn't heard of this author before I started watching Jade. And she constantly raved about Sebastian de Castell and the Great Court series and then this series. And I was like, you know what? I like way, I like fantasy, let's give it a good old English try. And my god am I glad that I did. Okay, so this follows a young boy called Kel who is part of the jam set and before they they turn sixteen, they complete these trials and they're trying to spark their bands and each of their bands gives them a different type of magical ability. And they need to complete these trials in order to be named a mage and be, part of, and be accepted as Jantep. There are also these people called Shartep, which are the people where the magic didn't spark for them. They couldn't wield it and they are technically like, like non-magic people. And they are seen as beneath Jantep because um, magic is seen as the all... Like if you wield magic you are all powerful. You are here, upper class. Shartep are down here and they basically disrespected user servants used to work in the mines to do menial tasks could only have menial jobs unfortunately for Kel <laughs> he has his dad is one of the best mages obviously and his sister who is younger than him has already sparked three of her bands she can wield magic and she's just like a little little wizardess, wizardess, a little, little, little wizard with magic and his magic seems to be failing him and he can't seem to spark, he hasn't sparked any bands yet and it comes up to these, it comes up to these trials and he really doesn't want to be named a Shartep, he wants to be a Jantep like his dad, make his dad proud but Kel has a way with words, he's very sneaky, he's a sneaky sneak, he's very charming and yeah that plays into like how this plays out and then comes along a woman called Ferius who tries to help him in her own way to realize that maybe magic isn't the be all and end all and maybe there are other ways to live and you don't have to be um, embarrassed of not wielding magic it's just great and then we meet Rikus if someone can get me a real life squirrel cat, I will pay you for one. Rikus. Rikus? Is he there? He's there. He's there. He's there. He's an unwilling participant in this whole thing <laughs> to begin with, but he is great. His character is great. George Jameson, the narrator, is great. Sebastian the Castle is writing. Great characters. Plot. Atmosphere, everything, top tier, ten, ten, tens, 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 tens across the board. I cannot wait to get onto Shadow Black. I read this in like a day. It was just loved it, loved it. Would recommend to everybody that loves fantasy, everybody that loves just a good, heart wrenching at times story. I cried at one point. Um, this was a roller coaster of emotions for me. It's just great. 100% recommend. So, they are my books of the month. I'm going to have to now edit this like 50 minute rant that I went on about books. But, <laughs> if you do like me and if you do like videos like this and you do want to see what I think of the books that I read in my own chaotic northern way, then please like, subscribe, comment down below what your favourite books of April were and until next time I will be going to read. <laughs> Bye!